afternoon. We are here at Roby Elementary School with Rick Crasslin. I am Mrs. Hymack, first grade. Today we're here to learn about separating solids, liquids, and gases. <laughs> Hey, thanks for that great introduction. So I'm here at Roby, and we have been studying the last couple weeks about matter. Matter, the stuff that the world and the universe is made out of. In fact, almost everything around you is made of matter. And as you guys know, matter can be a... Solid, liquid, gas. Gases, yeah, that, it could be some other things, but that's the three big ones that we wanna talk yes. about. You know, the sun is made out of matter. The air, and you move your hands through the air, you can actually feel it. And the earth, and even we are made of matter. And we have inside of us solids, liquids, and gases. We have solid um, uh, bones and teeth, right? We have liquid um, blood, and we have gases like oxygen in our body. So we are made of matter. And in fact, today we're gonna talk about separating uh, solids, liquids, and gases. And when you put these things together, we call that a mixture. A mixture, right? Say it. Mixture. And we're going to be making lots of mixtures today. Lots of them. About five. And we're going to look on different ways to separate them. A mixture is two or more different types of matter that we can separate again. So two plus matter that we can separate. And then we're going to do something that's a little bit tougher, but more interesting. We're going to make something called a solution. Solution. Say it. Solution. A solution is two or more matters that's hard to separate. Sometimes hard to separate. So you got that? Some new words: mixture, solution, and. Before we go much further, there's one more thing I want to talk about, and that has to do with changes. And the first change we're going to talk about is something called a physical change. A physical change, or, this one's interesting, a chemical change. Chemical change. Yes. So, what we, what we have here is either a physical change or a chemical change. Let me show you a physical change. Thank you. See this piece of paper right here? Uh -huh. We'll do something amazing to it. Mm -hmm. Not really. <laughs> now, this piece of paper is still paper, but that's called a physical change. When I take a piece of paper like this and I just tear it in half, it's still the same matter. It's oh. still a solid paper. It's solid because, look, it takes up space. I can't put my finger in it, and it has mass, even though it's not very much mass. So that was a physical change. Watch this. I changed it. Was that a chemical or a physical change? Physical. physical. You know why? Because watch, I can open it back up, and it is still paper. I haven't changed the properties. I haven't changed its mass. It's still paper. I just changed its physical shape. So that and this is an example of a physical change. So some of the mixtures you're gonna to make today are physical changes. In fact, most of them are. So let me, let me, let me see that, that pencil, please. Here's a pencil made out of a solid material. May I see my uh, knife here? Thank you. So I'm gonna take this knife and I'm gonna cut off the top of this pencil right here and here comes some pieces. What kind of changes am I doing as I sharpen this pencil? Here, catch one of those over for me, would you? What, what kind of change did I just do to this pencil? Physical or chemical? Physical. 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 It's still a pencil, right? Yeah. yeah. And give me those pieces right there. These little bitty pieces of shavings, they're still wood, they're still graphite. I did not change them. That's still a physical change. Would you like to see a chemical change? Yes. yes. Now, in a chemical change, the matter changes a lot. In fact, it might become something totally different. It might lose mass, it might change its properties, it might give off energy. So let's try that, here we go. Here's this physical change, right? Yes, yes? Mm -hmm. It looks yes. like a knife. And this is a lighter. 
And when I burn something, that is a chemical change. Ready? This paper will no longer be paper. And so, and you can see, look, that changed completely. It is no longer paper. In fact, I see, I saw, I felt heat. I saw, we'll do that again. I saw ash. I see some smoke coming. Do you think I'll be able to put this paper back together? No. No, I'm not. I won't be able to put that back together. That is a chemical change. In fact, look at this piece right here. This used to be paper. And now it's ash. Two examples of a physical change or a chemical change. You get the point? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we got a little bit of a background, a great introduction. Now let's get the material settled to everybody and let's get this show on the road. Are you guys ready? Yeah! Okay. So you have your materials. Let's go through a real quick checklist. Check. 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 Do you have a cup with a spoon? Check. Put it to the side of your tray. Do you have a red bowl? Put that to the side of your tray. Do you have a plate with a bunch of stuff on it? Yes, yes. yes or check? Check. Pick that up and put it off of your tray. Pick the whole, no, the white plate and everything. White plate and materials and the screen. Set it. There you go. That's perfect, girls. Solve your problem. Now, Put the blue, no, don't mess with it yet. Put the red bowl back on the tray. Check. Okay. I think we're ready to get started with some more materials. Good job. So right now, just for a check, you should have a blue tray with a red bowl. You should have a cup with a spoon and then a white plate with some strange material on it. <laughs> you have in front of you a mixture of Strange mini donut type cereal. You might call them Fruit Loops, right? Yeah. Take a look at that mixture. Take your finger and stir it around gently. That's made of two different types or more matter. That's a mixture, all right? How could we separate that mixture? Any ideas? How can we separate it? Yes, what do you think? By color. We could separate it by color, excellent. And I bet your teacher's going to start a list on the board how we can separate by color. You guys have 10 seconds to pull out all the yellow ones. Ready, set, go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Show me the yellow ones in your hand. Wow, that was, that was really quick. So that was pretty easy to separate that mixture by color. Nice job. Let's try a different way. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm gonna need your I'm gonna need your teacher for this. Is she good at volunteering, you think? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Now we just sorted these by by color. There's another way we can sort them. By taste. Are you up for it? Oh. Okay, okay. I'll tell you what. But to make this more more interesting, why don't you shut your eyes and hold your hand out? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna put, don't don't say the colors out loud. Boys and girls, make sure it's really the Fruit Loops he puts uh, in my hand, okay? Don't you trust me? No worms or anything. <laughs> you just gave me a good idea. Oh. Here's one, I'm gonna give you two of the same color. Don't say what color. There you go, go ahead, shut your mouth, eat those. Yes. Mm. Any ideas what color you think they might have been mm. by the flavor? I know it's yellow. No, it's Let's let her figure it out, okay? Now, I might give you the same color, or I might give you a different color, and we'll see if you can tell. She thought those were her favorite yellow, and I'm giving her these. Go ahead, try those. See if they're the same color, or a different color, or the same flavor. What do you think? You're tricking me. They no, taste I'm not the same. Me. They taste the same. So you can open your eyes now. So what did we give her the first time? Green. Green. And then the second one? Red. So sorting by taste is not that easy. So let's see if we can find another way to sort our mixture. What is this called? A mixture. mixture. 
Okay, we're going to add another mixture. Now, you know what I like about this mixture when you see it? It says, what, what's that number right there? 15. 15 bean soup. This is a mixture of 15 different types of beans. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a handful of this and add it to our Fruit Loops. Go ahead. Let's get that mixture mixed up. You guys don't like to mix beans with your Fruit Loops? <laughs> Go ahead and take your finger and make it a really nice mixture. In fact, I like to call that a mixed up mixture. Now you have quite a mixed up mixture, I would say. So we've tried sorting them by color. We've tried sorting them by taste. Now let's sort them by shape. So I know at least three or more shapes in there. What's one shape do you have? Hold up the small little mini donut. Let me see that. Put it in your hand. It's a Fruit Loop. It's a Fruit Loop. Show me that shape. Put one in your hand. Here's one. Ah, yes. There's that shape. Now find a bean and put it next to it in your hand. You got a bean? Uh, oh, there's an oval. And see if you can find a round bean. Oh, my friend here has found a way to sort her mixture by shape. Go ahead. You have 10 seconds to find different ways, different shapes to sort yours. Go. 10. 9. 8. 7. Oh, I see different shapes. I see nice Fruit Loops. I see weird Fruit Loops. <laughs> I see ovals, I see rounds. Takes a long time to do it by hand, doesn't it? Let's see what you end up with. Sophie here, she doesn't like to talk much, but she's very smart. And you look, Sophie, show me what you've sorted these. How have you sorted them? Into what? I sorted them into um, tri ovals and circles. Ovals and circles. That's a great way to sort. Go ahead. Thank you, Sophie. Nice job on that. Okay, so we're going to put this aside just for a second because I'm going to be thinking about a way to separate these beans from these Fruit Loops. So we'll put this over here for a second, but all of us are going to try this next one. We have here a liquid in a container. Yes, yes? Oh, yes, yes, yes. This liquid yes, yes, yes. and a spoon. Yes, 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 yes. So I have here a solid white material. It's a solid white matter. And what I want you to do is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one spoon, we'll share this, and put it in the liquid, but I'm not going to stir it. And all of a sudden, you've seen a change. Ew, it looks like and it does look very it interesting. Like we have just made what's called a solution. So let's go back to your seats. Don't stir it. One spoon. I didn't say it was salt. I said it was a solid white material. It looks like ice. I don't know. It's your turn. There you go. There you go. When you're done, bring it on back to me. Put a spoon in. Here we go. It's over here. Here it is right there. Nice. It's just like matter. Mm. Don't stir it, just pass it on. <laughs> Do we have to put it back in there? Don't stir it. She said don't. I did not stir it. There you go. Pick up your solution. Everybody say solution. Solution. And look at it. Did it all dissolve? Did it all dissolve? No. Are you sure? Hold it up by your face so you can see. Look at it from the side. You still see some salt in there. Yes. Has the water changed? Yes. Okay, give it us some stirs now. Let's see if we can get it to dissolve and make our solution even dissolve more. Stir it good. Make a little snow tornado. Snow tornado. Or, oh my gosh. Is more of it dissolving? Yeah. It's doing something. It's doing something here. What is it doing? It's like it's like it's making it clearish. It's making it clearish. I like that. Yeah. Nice. 
Okay. Oh, okay. I don't know. You guys, we took water. We added, that was a liquid. We added solid, small white grains of some matter. I'm not saying what it is. And then you mix them, and they seem to have became something different. Physical change or chemical change? Oh, if it's a physical change, that means we can put them back like they were. How would you separate... Oh, that means they've changed. They've changed. You can't take the salt. Oh, you think it's salt? You think it's salt? You can't take the salt out of the water. You can't take the salt out of the water. Does anybody have any way? So you got to guess that it is salt. How can we get the salt to come out of the water? Any ideas? Yes. Yes. How? Yes. Making it dissolve. We made it dissolve, but how are we going to make it come back out of the water? Yes. That, well, I'm sorry, what'd you say? We can use the drainer. Oh, we could use a strainer. So if we poured it through the strainer, you think that if it would, let's try that, okay? Hold your strainer over yours. Hold a strainer. No, just, we'll just try it right here. And let me see yours, your water. Take your spoon out. And let's see. Look what we're going to try here, guys. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but pour a little bit and see if we can strain just a little bit and see if that's going to work. A little bit more. A little bit more. That's a great idea, but it didn't work. Caroline, I have a different idea how we can separate the salt out of that water. Bring your solution of salt water up here, please. And I want you to put a little bit of it in this red bowl. Just pour a little bit in there. Okay. Nice. That's good. And I'll tell you what. Now we have some liquid salt solution in this bowl. Why don't you go put that over there by the window? And what's going to happen to that water in a day or two, do you think? Anybody think they might know what might happen? What? It might, um, it might dissolve. It might not dissolve. What's it called when... when oh, it might sizzle up. It sizzle up? I like... It might stay in the bowl. There's a word for that when the water goes back up in the sky. Anybody know what that word's called? Anybody? Starts with an E. What? Evaporation. Evaporation. Here, go put this in the window. And we'll see. You have to check back. You have to check back to see if, if that will evaporate or not. See the liquid that's in there? And if we do this right, it should evaporate out and leave the salt behind. But you know what? I'm a little worried about our Fruit Loops. I have an idea. Get your salt water solution ready. Okay? Get your Fruit Loops ready. And I want you to carefully pour your salt solution into your Fruit Loops and watch what happens. Pour it in there slowly. And keep going. Don't mix it. Just pour it in. Pour it all in. Keep going. Pour it all in. Pour it all in fast. What happened? What happened? The beast is so old. Now I don't want to eat it. What happened? The bean sunk. And the Fruit Loops did what? Load it. Turn to your shoulder partner and talk about what just happened. So what happened? How come we could separate these? What happened? Um, when you poured the water in, the the cereal floated, and the bean and the bean sunk to the bottom. Well, why did the cereal float and the bean sink then? Because the cereal has less mass than the beans. That is an amazing observation. Does anybody agree with that? <laughs> that's pretty cool. So that's another way we can sort by mass or by floating. Very cool. All right, so just so a quick review. We took salt. We dissolved it. This is solid into a liquid. 
we stirred it, it, it dissolved. That was a word you guys used a lot, it dissolved. And that was a physical change and, and it made a solution. And we're seeing if that will evaporate down and leave the salt. Wonder if the same thing would happen with sand. If I put sand in water, it's a mixture, but is it a solution? Let's find out. So if I put the sand in here, and, no, I like that. Let's see if it dissolves when I stir it. Wait a minute, did it, did it, wait a minute, it's still, it's still there. So, now, so some solids will dissolve in water, and some solids will not dissolve in water. It's still a mixture, a solution. This one does not dissolve. This one dissolved easily. So there's a lot more to learn about matter. You know, I thought of another way we could sort things. What? By, well, I'm rather large and you're rather small. small. So we could sort things by handsome large things <laughs> and beautiful yeah. small things. You want to try that? Uh-uh. No. no. What do you mean no? No. Small and big things. Okay, fine. Small and big things. Let's try it. Okay, so we're going to sort by size. So I happen to have here a size sorter. This is a sieve or a grid or a screen, and they come in any size you want, from big ones to small ones. This one's kind of a small one, maybe, I don't know, half a centimeter square. It probably says on there somewhere. For ages 18 months and over. That's a different type of sorting. <laughs> now we have a mixture here, and this mixture is very interesting. It's gravel, it's sand. You'd have this at your desk, but you notice they are not only different colors, different shapes, but different sizes. So here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna take this and probably pour it in here carefully. You can pour it all or a little, I don't know. And then, we have an empty plate, and we're going to put it here, and then we can use our fingers or our spoon. And what do you think is going to come out the bottom? It's Big things? Small things. Small things. Oh. Are we sorting by size? Yes. 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 And what tiny rocks, what do you think is going to stay? Yes. Maybe the big fat rocks. I was going to say the big handsome things would stay. What? Can you please? <laughs> you guys want to try this? No. Yeah. Oh, okay, look. So, all right. Try not to make too big of a mess. So as you sort this by size, what stays in the screen? What size stays in the screen? Big. The big, the big things, and what things goes big through the things. big things? What goes through the screen? And not oh, the small things. things, like the sand and the tiny rocks. Excellent. And some of these are I think we need to add one more thing to our list by sorting. So in front of you now, you have a container that has some round objects in it. Do not touch these, but I want you to examine them. Take a look at them. Hold them up close to you. You can touch the cup, but don't put your hand inside there. What shape are they? Circles. They're not circles. What's that word? Yes. Sphere. Sphere. Okay. Sphere. What color are they? Blue. What color? Blue and shiny. Blue and shiny. Are they all the same shape? No. They're not? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Are they all the same color? No. Okay. Are they all the same size? No. Yes. Okay. No. All right, so here's my question. Here's my question. Can you separate this mixture without touching it with your finger or with your spoon? Any ideas? Any ideas? Could we do it by color? Could we do it by taste? No. <laughs> no. Uh, shape. No, oh, they're all spheres. Mass? Yes. Floating or sinking? Yes. Size? Is there another way we can do it? Anybody have an idea? Yes. What do you think? We 
The shape? Sorry, they're all spheres. Yes. By color, we could, but by not touching them, I have an idea. Would you like to use another tool that you can sort these without touching? You have a magnet. Without touching, put the magnet on the outside of the cup and see if you can separate any of those objects. Lift it up, see if, it'll, if you can separate them. Did you, separ you separate them? Turn your magnet, see if you can get it to do it. Another way to separate a mixture using magnets. Go ahead and put your magnet inside the cup and see if you can separate them that way. Well, I think we can add one more to our list. Magnetism. Magnetism. Mr. Carlson, thank you so much. We have learned so much about matter today. We've learned about separating solids, liquids, and gases. We've learned about physical change and chemical change. And look at all the different ways we can, we've learned how we can separate matter. Color, taste, shape, mass, floating, sinking, small and big things, and magnetism. Whoa, science is so cool.